Hey guys, it's Omrecker, and today I'm taking a look at a game called Heroes and Generals, which is an upcoming free-to-play game that was just recently approved on Steam Greenlight. As I had covered McPixel, this is one of the first 10 that were announced by Valve, and it is coming up. There is a beta test that you can sign up for. I will provide a link to that in the description. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about the game and also the company. Retomoto is actually the company that existed before the formation of IO Interactive. If you're not familiar with IO Interactive, they're the guys who made the Hitman series. That's what they're known for. They also made Freedom Fighters and uh, Kane and Lynch is another title, but some of the founding members of IO Interactive, since their roots were with Retomoto, they ended up leaving IO and they went and recreated this company in order to focus on multiplayer games. So the footage that you're seeing here is entirely multiplayer footage. There doesn't seem to be any sort of single player campaign, it's all multiplayer, and it's a World War II FPS. But it's a little bit different than other games. You may be familiar with like the Call of Duty games, or Red Orchestra, stuff like that. Even Battlefield 1942. Uh, but this is a, a little bit different because there's a metagame to back it up, there's humongous maps, and you'll see that there's also vehicles, not just in the land, but also in the sky, so that kind of makes it more similar to Battlefield than some of the other World War II-themed games. It also keeps that, like, realistic aspect that a lot of players liked in games like Red Orchestra, where your bullets hit extremely hard. Uh, sometimes you can even down somebody in one shot. As a result, you really have to be aware of your surroundings and tactical when you're moving about the map. If you're not aware and you get caught off guard, it's very, very easy to get picked off before you even have a chance to defend yourself. By the time those bullets start flying, odds are you're going to be dead. So it's cool in that regard, in that it, this isn't really a arcadey FPS. It's actually meant to be realistic, which isn't something that you see all that often these days. Another thing I really like about the infantry side of things is that engagements take place not just up close and personal in indoor environments or just in very tight areas, but also in very wide open areas as you've seen already in some of these clips. So it's not all that rare to be engaging somebody when you pull up your sights and they look almost like they're a tiny ant. That's how far away some of these engagements will take place, not just with the infantry, but also with armor or even aircraft. It's also worth noting that there is bullet drop in Heroes in general, so it's not just quite as simple as lining up your sights with the enemy and then killing them. You do have to take into account how gravity is going to play a role over the distance between you and that target. And this goes not just for infantry guns, but also, like everything else, the vehicles as well. Beyond all that, there also appears to be bullet travel time. And this means that if your target is moving, when you try to engage it, you need to lead it a tiny bit in order to get your bullets to connect. And this is much like real life, where any sort of moving target, you've got to take into account that your bullet is going to have a travel time. Even though it moves super fast, it's still going to take a little bit of time to get to the point of where you're aiming. And you need to take that into account as you're engaging somebody, so that by the time that your bullet is at the area where you're shooting, that's where the target's also going to be at the same time. I'm also happy to report that in Heroes in Generals there is limited ammo. So players can run out, and if they run out, they're literally limited to either their sidearm, if they've got one, or their melee weapon. Or even their grenades, I suppose. But realistically, if, if you go off and you start spraying and praying, then you're putting yourself in a situation where you may not be able to defend yourself the next time you encounter an enemy. Beyond ammo, Heroes in Generals is pretty hardcore when it comes to health. You'll see a health bar in the lower right part of the screen, and it's part of a hybrid system that I really haven't seen before. I've seen games like Crisis 2 where you can take a ton of damage and then you go hide somewhere, and then your health completely regenerates. That's not the case in this game. Your bar reflects your actual health, and if you do take some damage in a firefight, you're going to continue carrying damage with you for at least until you can find somebody with a medkit or you can find a base that will allow you to regenerate some of that health. But if you can't, then you're stuck with that damage. But you may notice sometimes in some of these firefights that there's a white section of that bar. That white section represents the portion of your health that can regenerate, assuming that you can stop all incoming damage. It's a interesting system. I don't mind it too much. I don't view it the same as a pure regenerating system because I've never seen that white section 
cover the full bar. Typically, it'll get you just up maybe a quarter of the, the bar, if that. But otherwise, I mean, it is still very reflective of old school FPS, where damage you take, it, it's stuck with you. And it's going to make you more likely to die the next time somebody starts firing at you. Speaking of which, you guys may have noticed that I've been using the Garand in almost all of my gameplay clips. And there's a reason for that. Again, this is a free-to-play game, and players are going to have to unlock their weapons. The good news is, is that the basic rifles that you're given are actually quite effective and powerful, and I did not have much of a problem staying near the top end of the leaderboards every time I played. Despite that though, things did feel a little bit restrictive in the lack of customization, at least without having any sort of in-game currency, and I would have liked to have earned my first unlock a little bit earlier, but I do understand that the developers do need to find a balance between what's given to the player for free and what they actually have to unlock. My hope is that they will find more weapons to add to the game so that they can perhaps lower the prices on some of the lower end ones, let's say a lower end SMG, and have different variants of those weapons at a price point where players either have to earn a lot of credits by playing or they can spend money. There's more good news though and that's that players don't have to unlock any of the vehicles whatsoever. That goes for the tanks, the APCs, the Jeeps, even the bicycle, and yes, even the aircraft. The unlocking system seems to be bound entirely to the infantry experience. If you've got access to vehicles, there's nothing stopping you from jumping into them, at least right now at this point in the beta. That could very well change, but right now, anything goes when it comes to vehicles. The only unlocks that really players have to worry about are the guns and assault squads, which are something that I personally still don't fully understand. Although I'll get into those a little bit more when we talk about the metagame. Before we get into that though, I do want to cover the visuals in the game briefly. I think that overall, the visuals in this game are great. You'll see some oddities with shadows and stuff like that, or even some of the animations at times. But overall, for a free-to-play game, uh, this game looks great. And you'll have the sunbeams coming down, you'll see effects everywhere. Again, the shadows can sometimes be hit or miss, but this is beta. And the only other area where sometimes things look a little bit shoddy is when you're in the sky and you're coming down towards the, the ground and you'll see sometimes like riverside textures where they look almost like repeating tile. But aside from that, I mean, it, it's really a great looking game, especially considering that it is, again, free to play. Also, the audio experience is top notch. I mean, the sounds in this game are as good as any other World War II game, bar none. Okay, so now let's talk about the front end, which is where Heroes and Generals gets very, very unique very fast. This game has a meta campaign. You've literally got the entire map of Europe, and every battle that happens in the game, or that's an option for players to play, is generated based off of the progress in the, the war map. So you'll be able to click on different missions where enemy forces are colliding, and see what sort of reinforcements are coming to them, what numbers there are for infantry and planes and tanks and stuff like that. And these are things that literally are the result of player action. So when you actually play a war campaign in this game, and it's multiplayer, uh, you're having all of the players determine the fate of the battles. So it's not like computer generated, it's literally the outcome of when the players go in. And the number of troops and tanks and stuff like that are determined by the reinforcements that are available, which the generals in the game are actually controlling. They're sending out those reinforcements and getting them out on the front lines. So sometimes you'll see battles where the odds are horribly like out of your favor. They're actually for your enemy's favor. If your friendly general goes and sends you a bunch of reinforcements, it can totally change that. Where all of a sudden you might have more infantry than they do. And literally that represents the number of lives you have, how many times your players can respond. So again, this is a very, very interesting system. The only problem with it is that players are much less likely to jump into a battle where the odds are against them. So let's say the enemy only has 20 tickets to your 80. Odds are they're not going to want to populate that server, which sometimes creates kind of a stalemate until other generals start adding in reinforcements. Once players finally feel ready to fight though, there are going to be servers waiting for them that represent the conflict sites on the map. And at the moment, the game supports up to 24 players and I'm told that the developers are looking to increase that by the time the game launches, so that could easily be 32 or more players at launch. 
Now, let's talk about customization a little bit, because that's where things are going to get a little bit controversial. So, players can modify their weapons extensively. This goes from everything from the barrel, to the internals, the sights, even the ammunition. And this requires in-game currency. But here's the deal. Using gold, which is the currency that you buy with real money, you can convert that into the in-game currency and unlock anything you want. So realistically, I mean, players can get a jump ahead on other players and get whatever weapons they want in their kit. They can get, you know, more soldier layouts where they can have like an anti-tank guy and stuff like that. And, you know, just really deck out their setup without ever having to really play much of the game. Some people are going to definitely call that pay to win. Now, I had mentioned before that I stuck with the default kit and I had no problem maintaining high places on the leaderboards, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the case for everybody, and also I can't tell you if I was playing against guys who were using gold or not, or what the impact is of the number of upgrades that are out there. What I can say though is that there's definitely that system where you can go and get all this stuff without ever having to work for it and unlock it yourself. So that might bother some players, and you know, rightly so, because everybody wants to maintain kind of an equal playing field and I'm really not sure why the developers are going this route versus focusing on things like cosmetics because we've seen cosmetics do very well in other games. Um, another issue with this whole system is that there's also a war bond system which provides rewards to those who buy gold. So they can invest their gold into war bonds and then get monthly returns on that investment almost like a, you know something you do in real life. And then at the end of the bond term, they get their money back, essentially in gold. Plus, they also got all those returns that they had received while their gold was tied up. So that might bother some people even more because essentially the rich get richer. But, you know, time will tell exactly how grindy things are going to be with the free currency. Like, how long is it going to take players to unlock weapons? That's really not clear in the final game. But this is where you guys come in. And you can provide feedback to the developers as to what you like and what you don't like. And once again, the link to the beta application is in the description. I do have a couple more minor complaints though about the beta build. And the first is that the server pings in the beta at the moment are kind of all over the place. Half the time I'm finding servers where I have a bad ping of like 150 milliseconds and up. And other times I'm finding servers on the US side that I have, you know, an excellent ping to. It would be nice if there was some consistency. Also, the community right now seems to be really favored towards the Axis, and this is causing servers to sometimes be really imbalanced where there's far fewer ally players on a map than there are Axis. Well, guys, that does it for this video. This has been Heroes and Generals by Red Omoto, and again, it's just gotten through the Steam Greenlight process. As always, please be sure to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel, even share some of my videos with them. I always appreciate when you guys do that. There's more videos to come, so stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.